Hello, this is Margo Tienemann. Hi, Margo. This is Dr. Jones. Do you have a minute for me to run a case by you? You're in luck. This is a perfect time. Great. I, I thought I'd call you because I remember seeing you give that talk about PANS, and I think I might have a kid in my office who, who has it, and I wanted to run him by you before he leaves to see if I'm on track. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, Darius is a seven-year-old, previously healthy boy, but his parents insisted we see him urgently today. He's suddenly developed severe separation anxiety, violent rages. Uh, he wouldn't leave his mother even at nighttime. His parents are also reporting he's developed new aneurysis, urinary frequency at, at the rate of several times an hour. Ooh, how suddenly did the symptoms start? Um, pretty suddenly. His parents say that he was completely himself one day and then just fell apart the next. Hmm. Well, a sudden onset is one diagnostic criterion. It's important to establish the tempo of symptom evolution. Has he experienced separation anxiety before? No, his developmental history is unremarkable. His mom said he ran into preschool with hardly a look back at her. He's out of school now, and he's regressing his ADLs, he's using baby talk. He's had terrible meltdowns a couple times a day. Oh, and one more thing. I don't know if it's OCD, but he asks the same questions repeatedly. Hmm. What does he ask? Well, questions about locking the door, the, the dog getting out, burglars. Then he drags his mother to the doors and the windows just to check them. Those do sound like OCD symptoms. So... He had the sudden onset of OCD, questioning and checking, separation anxiety, aneurysis, rage attacks, and behavioral regression? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you called. It does sound like PANS. When we suspect PANS, our first step is to elicit a detailed medical history, paying attention to the recent health of the family members and close contacts especially to reports of infections. We'll also ask about environmental or psychosocial stressors or trauma, as these could be associated with sudden behavioral changes. In the Stanford PANS Clinic, we collect and review all available records to establish the course of illness, including records from the pediatrician, the school, and other specialists who cared for the patient from birth on. What we're looking for is a relationship between infections and changes in behavior. Let's return to the medical history. Dr. Jones, what about Derry's recent medical history? Anything there? Um, well, his mother reported a few things from a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, a URI with rhinorrhea, abdominal pain, he vomited once. He, she brought in a picture on her phone of a transient rash that looks like scarlatina, and so let me email that to you now. Okay. Hold on. This does look scarlatiniform. Were any close contacts ill? Um, no one in his family, but his sitter had documented strep. Hmm. Okay. So, URI with rhinitis, vomiting, scarlatiniform rash, and a recent strep exposure. Anything significant in his past medical history? Yeah, recurrent otitis medias... Two documented episodes of strep pharyngitis. Other than that, just routine care and vaccinations. No history of behavioral problems. No history of UTI. Mm. And what about the rest of his family? Often, family histories in these cases are significant for autoimmune disorders, OCD, tics, and other psychiatric issues. Huh, it's interesting you ask that because uh, his grandfather had a heart valve replacement... Um, his grandmother had thyroid disease, his mother had frequent strep infections as a child. 
Derry's sibling has had frequent ear infections. Currently, his aunt has OCD. His uncle exhibited tics as a child. So, yeah, quite a bit there. Okay. He sounds more and more like our type of patient. What did you find on review of systems and physical exam? Well, I wanted to consult with you first to see what exactly I should be looking out for. Okay. Let's go over that now. <laughs> 